Yesterday I was on the phone on hold and I had Vivaldi going on. And I listened to that violin and it was awful. So I was thinking, let's talk about how the violin sound has changed in the past 40 years. Violin is not violin. What? Stay tuned and I'll tell you about that. Hello, hello, this is Edgar from Cremona, Italy. I'm a violin maker and I built violins, viola, cello, double bass. This is my daily life. I've never really had the bow, only building best sounding violins. And now I have already a few years of experience, 40 years of violin making. And when I started making instruments, actually, I was not really too much into this violin sound. But still, at that time, people were still imitating like high fans who plays a certain vibrato and a certain style of violin, which some people associate to classic violin sound. So high fans played with a lot of vibrato and we're talking about many, many, many years ago. But if you compare that with nowadays idols, Joshua Bell, Maxim Wengerov, David Garrett, if you, if you like him, or Hilary Hahn, all these have a certain different style nowadays and this difference is caused probably a little bit also because the recording the existence of computers at a certain point in 20 30 years ago we all wanted perfection and we all tried to get this perfection made with everything we do so we tried to make super precise violins here in Cremona they made super super precise instruments while in America things were already a little bit different. On the point of sound, idol, things were also different from one nation to another. So in America they had a little bit a more powerful antique sound. In Germany they wanted only beautiful and overtones. At that time they only were searching for overtones. They also have chosen strings for the instruments from Birastro, still got strings with silver around. Things were in a different direction in Germany and imagine Germany and then you have Austria next to it and in Austria again they had already a complete different sound. They wanted focused sound, more modern, they tuned the A higher in Austria because of Vienna Philharmonie and uh, same thing in Asia. Sound idol was different because of their origin and all these things with the existence of the internet has somehow worldwide more and more getting one taste. We believe it's our taste but certainly we all are influenced by news and, and things happening around the world and then we try to imitate them and what we see we automatically store in our brain and out of what we store we create our desire, our idol and whatever we want but this is not only in music this is too bad also in politics and whatever so when it comes now to sound and how the whole violin sound has changed i would describe it that years ago or some nations let's take the germans were extremely focusing on beauty and nice and the italian powerful was not that much researched and on the other side as soon as there was an italian power powerful violin. They all thought this is great sounding. So it was a little bit, you never knew what should you do now. So when I was building my first instrument, it was like a horror vision to not make the thickness too thin because then within one month it won't sound anymore and it's only screaming and too loud and all this. I have never made an instrument in my life which became worse. I don't know, never happened. I made maybe some instruments too thin but then I, I actually changed the pieces which I made my mistakes because actually they didn't really sound that nice. So I think this whole myth about the, the thickness too thin and all that, I don't really believe in that. On the other side, I believe that if it's nice thick, it's nice projecting and there is more material projecting the sound into the last rows of the concert hall. In between, there comes just up into my mind that this week uh, on Monday there was a Q&A from 
my Patreon channel. So if you are interested to make some questions or you a little bit in violin making and playing and you want to know a little bit more, it's a good way to learn about some specific topics. And there is one of my patrons, a young man from Greece. He's now in the violin making school in Mittenwald. He told me that my thickness concept on top and back is very different of what they make or get taught in school how they should make it. So he asked the teacher how comes that these thicknesses are let's say in the middle on the back much lower and then thicker and it all goes It's a different concept. And the teacher said yeah because this is how we do it here in Germany and if you want to make a soloist instrument then you have to make it how you name it how in the middle thicker and in this area thinner and things like this. I didn't even imagine that something like this still exists, that in Germany they still teach a thickness concept, which from my point of view, looking from the Kremlin's makers, is an old concept which will only create beautiful instruments, but not strong and powerful instruments. And I have the impression that nowadays, even in Germany, they all want actually powerful, projecting, great sounding instruments instruments Italian sound and this Italian sound can be made even by makers in Germany, in America, in Australia, wherever. Yeah? It's just a question that you have to stop doing what you did for the past 50 years and just say hey let's let's make it now how the daily desire is, is from the musicians. So you have to listen to your customers and create what your customers want and that's what we do here every day. Another thing I wanted to tell you is a very interesting thing. I did didn't even believe it but every time I make a nice video on YouTube and I tell you to subscribe people subscribe so I need to do that otherwise you're lazy you're just watching their couch potato you have to subscribe to my channel thanks so nowadays, at least here in Cremona, I have the impression also because the competition is so strong, we cannot permit to make only a beautiful sounding violin. It has to be of course beautiful, but it has to be as well powerful, focused and has to go all the way into the last row. This is a must. And then beside that, once you adjust the sound, it has to be equilibrated, quick responding, and all that so we can actually more and more say these are all description of a sound which every instrument needs to have beside of the character and then we have Testore, Guarnieri and then all the different Guarnieri models in between a Haifes, a Isae, a Ole Bull, a Sainton and whatever they all have a different sound the model is different so you have a Guarnieri character but like the Haifes, Isae and all these specific models and these models all need to be equilibrated quick responding projecting loud beautiful as well but beautiful at the time when you decide to be it must be rough like a real guarnieri when you decide as a musician to play rough nowadays i think people cannot permit anymore to have an instrument which is small just for chamber music and uh, just beautiful sounding i had some issues with japanese dealers who told me how to I have to make them thicker because my instruments are too loud but I, I just refuse to make instruments which don't sound. My instruments have to sound from the very first day and the more you play them the better they become. This is my mission and if you look for a good sounding great instrument then I'm the right man and if you just have one to something with four strings then might go somewhere else. So a violin, a great violin should be a tool which you as a musician decide how it sounds. The violin itself has to be able to be played just like let's say Haifetz or like Oestrak or all these famous musicians of the past and then the better you become then you create your own style and maybe one day you are one of these famous musicians who are nowadays reflecting our actual taste of sound. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a very interesting subject. Tell your friends, subscribe. Ciao.